Hi, good morning and hello, hello, and welcome to either your first lesson of Unit 3 Economics in the 2021 in commencement or in January of 2021, or you're doing some cramming for economics at the end of 2020 in the lead up to the exam on the 23rd of November, and you want to get some of the first area of study out of the way. Either way, um, we're going to be looking at Unit 3 Economics, Area Study 1, it's all about microeconomics, supply and demand, resources, relative scarcity, all those kind of things, market failure, government failure. You're going to be getting into the specifics of each of them, um, the important things about them. We're trying to do this in pretty small chunks to keep it nice and bite-sized and understandable. And one thing that I'm really focusing on in this set of videos is only giving you the exact information you need based on the key knowledge outlined in VCAR's study design. So there might be other things that your teachers teach you, or there might be other things in textbooks. Based on what the key knowledge states in the study design, this is exactly what you need to know and nothing extra. So uh, let's get into, you don't need to know about this because uh, if you're my class, I'll talk about this in class. But um, for each of these things, these things we're gonna get in the key knowledge. As you can see with area study one, it's a pretty big topic. So area study one, the SAC was 40% of the unit three score. Um, so there's a lot that you need to know. We're gonna break this down to about eight lessons of content, as you can see with a lot of dot points there, some will get blended together. But what we're gonna be talking about today is just this first dot point, relative scarcity, needs and wants, resources and opportunity cost. The important thing I'll point out there is that just as opportunity cost, many of the resources that exist go through opportunity costs, trade-offs and cost-benefit analysis, as well as production possibility diagrams. Although we might use a production possibility diagram to discuss this stuff at some point, because it's not specifically in the key knowledge, I'm not going to teach it to you because that could waste useful space in your brain for other topics. So let's move on to relative scarcity. So relative scarcity is known as the basic economic problem. It's all about the fact that we have unlimited needs and wants, but only limited resources to fulfill them. And therefore, we must make decisions about how we allocate our scarce resources in a way that maximizes living standards. This is really important. Like the kind of key points here are uh, being unlimited needs and wants, limited resources. And we need to allocate our scarce resources in a way that maximizes living standards. Like every time we produce any good or service, we are making a decision about how to allocate our resources and how that's going to impact living standards because we can't satisfy everyone's needs and wants because there's an imbalance of needs and wants to the resources that we have. Therefore, we've got to try and create a combination of production that is going to best maximize everyone's living standards, which will end up being broken down into material and non-material, uh, which is weirdly not in this topic, but then comes up in the next topic. Um, I usually end up teaching it earlier on because we've done it in year 11 anyway but we want to maximize living standards. We want the best possible outcome for society based on how we um, allocate our limited resources to maximize our unlimited needs and wants. Then we're going to fully fulfill them, but hopefully we will come close. This then leads on to resources. So in BC Economics, we technically look at three main types of resources. Um, some resources also reference entrepreneurial resources, but it's never specifically come up before. So um, we can, we're going to keep it simple. So the three that we're going to look at, we're going to look at natural resources. We are going to look at labor resources and we're going to look at capital resources. And these are all the different types of resources that are used in production in our economics. So natural resources are gifts of nature. And we've already seen my first typo. It's natural, that's a pretty poor form, but gifts of nature. So land, water, air, soil, etc things that will occur on Earth with no human interference. There's a question that came up on a VCE teacher's like, Facebook forum the other day, because that's a cool thing that we do, um, talking about is um, refined oil a natural resource? And my argument was, well, it's not, because there's been human interaction with that to make it refined. Unrefined oil, like that occurs naturally, perfect. That's a natural resource. It occurs with no human interference. Refined oil has been through a production process, therefore it is a good or service um, or a manufactured good, but not natural. Um, another thing I talk about with natural resources, one really important thing 
with any of these resources being able to give examples to show that you can understand and apply that knowledge. But um, one thing that I always use as an anecdote to explain natural resources is that in a SAC, probably in like 2017, 2018, I used to have a question about a pizza shop and um, to give a natural labor and capital resource in um, describing a pizza shop. And so a few students with natural resources gave the example of cheese. Cheese is not a natural resource because cheese has gone through a production process, although it's created from like dairy from cows, it goes through a production process. Like if you are walking out in nature and see a block of cheese just resting on the ground, do not eat it. That's unsafe. That's not naturally occurring. Someone has put that there because that is not a natural resource. A natural resource then would be the trees, the grass, the sky, the oxygen, not the sky, um, water, all those kind of things that are occurring without any human interaction. Then we've got our labor resources. So human skills and talents used to produce goods and services. Example, a doctor, a road worker, a teacher, anything that is used in that production process. And then lastly, capital resources are the physical plants and equipment used to produce those goods and services. So a pizza oven, a delivery van, um, any machinery in a factory, the factory itself, all those things are capital resources because they are the plant or equipment used to produce those goods and services for their resources in VC economics. Then we are going to look at opportunity cost. So um, opportunity cost is all about our problem of relative scarcity. So every uh, production decision that's made in the economy means those resources are not being used to produce something else. And we call that an opportunity cost. So it's the cost or benefit foregone by choosing to produce the next best alternative. So it's a very important thing there is the next best alternative what you've lost to produce the next best thing. So um, usually I start building this up by using personal examples for students. So usually go with the really simple um, example of by choosing to come to school. So if you're watching this, you might not be at school. You probably are not. Um, you could still be in bed. Um, and that's the next best alternative. A real world economic example is by spending $70 billion on JobKeeper, the government is unable to inject that money into education, which would create more skilled labor in so by choosing to allocate the resources in one certain way to keep people employed, they're unable to spend it in a way that might make um, workers more skilled and efficient in the future, which may benefit the same. So that's the opportunity cost, that's the benefit foregone, that $70 billion cannot go into education. And so that's an opportunity cost. So the definition for it being that it's the production or cost or benefit foregone by choosing to produce, um, by not, how to produce the next best alternative. So knowing that definition is very, very important. And that's it for this first little bit. So a nice little short eight minutes of basic economics. Um, next time we're going to start going into what a perfect market is, what perfect competition is, and the elements that need to exist for perfect competition, as well as relative prices, relative um, profits, and how relative prices impact resource allocation as well as a few different types of efficiencies that kind of ties in with these first little things we do before going into Laura's demand and supply in lessons three and four. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment below. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.